mysterious fantasy open world monsters, survival, crafting, cooperation, decisions, changing the narrative, Nottingale in a nutshell. This unknown game made by Inflection Games, a studio that includes Bioware veterans, wants to become top-notch and if the promises will be kept, we might witness another great survival production. So what is exactly hiding behind this title? To begin with, the world is called Fi. Well, actually, worlds of Fi that are set in a Gaslam fantasy Victorian age. For those who don't know, Victorian era is a time in Great Britain history when morality was utterly strict, where emotions were held back. Those days, using the word leg could even be a disgrace. It's also known for its fancy, flimsy clothes and fashion. Alright, bounce back from history. I'm not really good at it. What's up with referring to the worlds? The usage of this term is deliberate here, as we players will be able to travel between realms using portals, which are meant to be a big deal in the game. Basically, there is going to be a wide range of biomes that can be explored by players, unlocking them over some time. All of them are unique in their own way, giving us diverse adventures amongst those lands. How special they will be? That's a good question, but actually the game creators and faces coming up with particular enemies for each biome, NPCs and tasks they'll give us or factions, hostile towards a player or being friendly. Currently, the devs confirmed we have seen only three of them, which are few of many. We have no information on if those will be automatically generated or pre-prepared, but in flashing games devs refer to them as an effect of parallel universes, which means a big variety of them is about to come. What's kind of confirmed is players won't be forced or pushed to reach specific realms in order to progress with the story, however, sometimes to obtain some items we are going to be. Obviously, we won't be alone over there, as those places are filled with creatures based on mythological imaginations, folklore or fairy tales of that century, like the so-called Bandersnatch, a hybrid between a raptor and a bat. The Alpha's goal is to make Lands of Fire an extraordinary experience, filling the world with things that will create the feeling of it being alive and real. The devs are actually pretty keen on world building as they work on games like Mass Effect, Dragon Age or Star Wars Knights of the Republic, so they know what they are doing. Another big feature of Nightingale is that we will be able to make our own homes, villages or even towns pretty everywhere. For now, we don't have clear boundaries where we can or cannot raise our structures, but surely it will not be restricted a lot. For sure, building farms, our own estate, communities will be inherent to survive. Not only that, the world is meant to be interactive. It seems that players will have an option to decide what kind of path they want to take with specific situations. This formula might be expanded in lots of different ways and as we already have seen one of them in the trailer, people are getting along with the giant or being attacked by it. It ain't wrong to assume that there will be few outcomes to that kind of events. The direction here arguably will be innovative and the field for many crazy mechanics is wide and open. Okay, time for a little bit of a lore. So the humanity before the beginning of the game had been using portals for hundreds of years, traveling around the realms. However, with the start of our journey, a catastrophe is due to occur a sudden collapse of arcane portals. From now on, humans are stranded between parallel universes trying to survive and find the last haven of humanity, Nightingale City. Nonetheless, reaching that place is not final, that means it is somewhat of a milestone rather than a final quest in the game. What's also interesting, the lands of fire are going to be filled with magic, but we as characters are not really used to it. 
There are only few people that wield that powerful and mysterious power, although there is a way to improve our abilities towards sorcery. And of course, we can travel across the realms of fire with or without others, meaning there is cooperation mode. We don't know how many people can play together, but the number is estimated to even 10 players at one time. Challenges are waiting for both of preferred game modes, for instance fighting with the bosses so you don't have to worry about losing any of the content. So even though there are lots of information about Nightingale, it still remains a mystery. We have been shown one trailer and a few interviews. However, it would be a good option to keep an eye on this title, 